just um, reintroduce myself for those of you who are just joining us. My name is Samantha Law. I'm the creative brand manager handling all things marketing and communications for Berkeley City Music. Um, I once was a City Music student as well for the Boston site. So um, it's really excited, exciting to be on the other side of uh, working with the program and seeing all of you all um, do your thing and, and aspire. And um, I know you guys are gonna have a great experience on campus and super excited you're able to do so. Um, I am going to call on some of my team members to see if we can do some introductions, just so you know some of our faces, our names as staff, um, definitely want you to, to know who's looking out for you in the program because you have a lot of people who care about you and your experience uh, during the summer and beyond. So I'm gonna mute some folks. So make sure you keep yourself muted so that we can hear everybody and throughout the chat um, or throughout the session. We just want to make sure it keeps um, we keep the volume to the minimum until we have time for questions. Um, all right, so I'm going to pass the mic off to Casey Cox, who I'm sure you all have heard a lot from as you prepare for the summer, and then we'll head over to Linwood. Thank you, Sam, and hi, everyone. I'm so glad y'all are here. I know we've been emailing for months, um, for some of you since November when the application opened. Um, so I just wanna say welcome, welcome. And I'm actually, I'm on campus. I'm here in the City Music Boston office. So if y'all need anything, I'm dropping my email in the City Music email in the chat. I oversee the City Music email as well. Um, so I'm here if you're having any issues and you don't know where to go, if you have a scheduling issue, I might not have the answer, but I can help you connect you to somebody who does on campus. So um, I'm here all summer long. Don't be a stranger um, and, and shoot me an email whenever. All right. Welcome, y'all. Have a great five weeks. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Linwood Harper. I'm the academic program manager for education outreach. Uh, so happy to see all of you. Um, I'm on campus as well. Uh, I'm at this in the same building right across the hall from Casey. Um, and I'll be dropping my email in the chat as well. Um, I really uh, just am here uh, to support and kind of like, you know, uh, walk alongside with you, anything that you may need, um, you know, in terms of being on campus or where a building is. I'm sort of wandering around between this building and other buildings as I have a child in the program myself. So um, yeah, just happy to see all of you. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Linwood and Casey. Um, I am going to pass the mic to Justin. Hey, everybody. I'm Justin Johnston. I'm the Assistant Director of Operations with City Music. Um, I do a lot of the behind the scenes uh, work onboarding our guest artists as they come on um, online, um, make sure they're paid on time, things like that. But uh, I'm also around if you have any questions, uh, if you um, are a performer, you know, and with City Music, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll be the one to be connecting with you for, for payment information. So, uh, but it's great to see everybody. Um, welcome to Boston. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you all do this summer. Great, thanks, Justin. I am gonna pass the mic now to John Biggis. I'm here, sort of, in the dark. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm John Biggis. Uh, I manage the uh, Pulse website. If you've used Pulse, I, hey, I see Ronald in the house. You sent me a request for a password fix. I hope we fixed your issue anyway. So, um, yeah, I um, help with the development of the Pulse website. I hope you've all had a chance to use it. And if you have any questions about it, um, or just want to let us know what you think, just uh, reach out to Pulse Health. She's like super lovely. Too. Thank you, John. All right. Who is next? All right. I think um, otherwise I'm going to pass it if, if you are available, Dr. B. I would love for you to speak to our students. Hi everyone, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. 
looking forward to a lot of great music making and all the other things that you're doing. I'm privileged to be uh, the uh, executive, the VP for the program, but just really excited. And you all are in great hands uh, with everybody. Um, and we'll see you at the concert. I'm really looking forward to all of the performances at the end of the five week and everything in between. Good luck and all the best. Thank you, Dr. B. And then I think I just saw, I don't want to put her on the spot, but I just saw Erin come in. Erin, do you want to say a couple words since you're with the network on the network side? Maybe lost her. Okay. Can you see me and hear me? Yes, I can see you now. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, it is great to see all of you. Um, I'm Erin Anderson. I work with the network members as well as the college students who come to Berkeley. Um, so if any of you are coming to Berkeley, I'm the one you want to talk to um, with any questions. As Casey said, come yeah, to us. Yeah. If we want an answer for you, we know who to refer you to and where to go. Um, I'm very excited, as Dr. B just said, for the final concert. Um, very excited for all the music. And I'm also on campus as well right now. Um, I'm in our conference room. Um, so don't be a stranger if you want to come stop by and say hi. Thanks, Erin. And lastly, I will hand it over to Maria to say a couple of things. Oh, you're muted, Maria. I muted myself because my puppy is making noise. <laughs> I am the senior administrator um, for family services and students. And I work closely with student parents and caregivers um, to help with uh, also with recruitment initiatives to our programs uh, from the music clubhouses within the um, Boston area. And I also help in formalizing those connections between school and community partners. So I work very closely and report directly to the senior director, Mr. Misael Martinez, and also Ms. Casey Cox, the enrollment and advising manager. So I am working remotely today from home, um, but whenever I'm on campus, you can come and see me. I'm right near Erin. Great to, to meet everyone. Awesome. All right. So that's part of our team. <clears throat> that's not even all of the folks that are on our team. You will meet um, Misael Martinez, who, like Maria said, is the senior director of operations and also um, oversees uh, the creative youth development for Berkeley City Music. And then Aaron Campbellot, who is the assistant dean, mm -hmm. um, does all the partnership compliance and career development for Berkeley City Music. And goes around the network sites to make sure that you all um, can be here and that you know there's good communication between your network site directors and our home site um, at Berkeley City Music. So I'm really excited to be here with you all. I'm excited to introduce our guest speakers. Um, I'm just going to quickly kind of frame the conversation that we're going to have today and each week on Tuesdays, um, as Casey emailed you, we'll be doing these weekly talks where we'll bring in different creatives and different artists um, within the creative and, and music industries um, to talk about different career paths, uh, you know, their, their journey as creatives and kind of, um, you know, the theme for this series of, of five weeks is defining your why as an artist, really understanding who you are, what your sound is, what you want to accomplish during this time, and um, just, you know, supplementing talks and discussions that'll hopefully support you in understanding that for yourself so you leave feeling empowered and you feel, um, you know, excited to, to go out and put your music out there, do whatever it is that you'd like to do within the creative industries. So I'll go ahead and introduce our guest speakers and then give you a little context what we'll be talking about. Maceo and Aisha Refuerzo will be joining us today. Um, Maceo is a multi-hyphenate creative. He's a designer, a photographer, a writer, and directly and more broadly a storyteller. 
Aisha is a content creative, uh, content creator, a creative consultant, a photographer, and cinema. Cin excuse me, cinematographer. Maceo and Aja currently oversee the rebranding of the Marathon clothing brand, um, which Nipsey Hussle started, and have worked with clients such as the NFL, Walmart, Snapchat, Amazon, um, the Vision uh, Modeling Agency. And Maceo and Aja have both worked on editorial slash fashion, corporate, and musician and artist space projects as creative directors, photographers, and designers. Maceo recently worked on um, a music video that we're putting out in October. He helped creative direct that. And Aja helped to um, photograph and um, really spearhead a lot of the creative uh, concepts for our photo shoot of our city music ambassadors who will also be announcing later this summer. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce Aja and Maceo to the virtual Zoom stage. Um, and just introduce like the concept of being a multi-hyphenate creative, right? So I know you all are coming in here as musicians, but as creatives, oftentimes we are good at many different things, right? Um, I started out as a singer, right? And then I moved into uh, creative writing and marketing, communications, graphic design, um, and really just you know, talking about the concept of, as we know in this specific day and age and in this industry, um, it's so important to have multiple talents and really own um, your aesthetic as an artist, to own your story, right? To really know what, what story you're telling about yourself as an artist and as a person and defining your why as a creative. Um, and so I wanna, you know, introduce Aja and Maceo because they are, such eclectic talents. They have so many um, skills in their in, in, in tools in their tool belt um, as creatives, as photographers, as people who you know can completely conceptualize brand identities and um, things like that. And you know also uh, work closely with artists just like you. So I want to give them the opportunity to kind of talk about their journeys as creatives and then open it up to ask you some questions about, you know, who are you? What do you, what is your story as an artist? And um, how are you going to define your why throughout these five weeks of being here? So I will pass it off to Aja and Maceo. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see all 66 of you. Um, I'm Aja Ray Referzo. As Sam said, I'm a photographer, filmmaker, oh, so many things. Um, and I'm so happy to be here and talk to all of you guys. I'm her brother. I think I got muted. Uh, I'm her brother, Maceo. Um, yeah, it's, it's like I'm a photographer, more broadly a storyteller. I think it's hard to pinpoint what exactly we do, um, which I think is, is I mean, everyone's kind of this dynamic multi-hyphenate artist nowadays, um, but I, I'm just glad to be here. I mean, it's kind of surreal to be speaking to uh, high school students. I was like, I mean, I was in your guys' position two years ago, so to speak to all 66 of you is surreal, um, and I'm just blessed to have this opportunity. Um, thank you guys, uh, you know, for being open to hearing uh, my sister and I speak. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing that intro, y'all. I am going to start off with a couple questions just to open us up. And the first question that I'd love to ask you both is how do you define yourself, uh, yourselves as artists and how did you find your path as a creative? I can go first. Um, so I grew up as a dancer, actually. Um, I started dancing at five years old and, you know, I was continuing that path until I was 18. Um, but I grew up in the film industry. I was always on set with my father. He would drop me off in the wardrobe, hair and makeup. And, you know, that was my little playground as a little six-year-old. And I think being surrounded by that as a young child, it planted so many seeds into my mind where I was like, okay, I'm aware of this. I see what's happening around me, but I'm not really immersing myself in it. And 
when I was 14, I really wanted to be a YouTuber. So I like started playing around with my dad's Canon camera, started taking photographs of myself and really just gaining that confidence with the camera. And I think at 15, you know, I kind of just pivoted and I went to art school at 15 for filmmaking. And it was definitely a drastic change, but it ended up developing into something so beautiful and something that I do today that I really, really love. And Maceo actually told me this yesterday that he notices whenever I'm shooting, whenever I'm developing um, a project or even on set, I tend to blossom. I'm more free whenever I'm within that space. So being able to be part of this conversation today is really great. Sam, do you mind re uh, re uh, saying the question again? Absolutely. Uh, how do you define yourself as an artist and how did you find your path as a creative? Man, all right. So I, I guess my journey is a little different in that I started as an, I was an athlete growing up my whole life. Um, played soccer and basketball ever since I was six years old. Um, deeply passionate about it. Um, I actually hated art when I was younger. Um, I didn't like to draw, I didn't like to color. Um, I didn't like any of it. Um, and so, yeah, from six to 15 to 16 years old, my whole lifestyle was basketball and soccer. Um, I went to a school called Crossroads um, out here in Santa Monica, um, in LA where I live. And that school is really cool because it is, um, it's a pretty dynamic school in that there's, it's not only diverse, but there's a lot of kids who do a lot of different things. And when I started to grow up and when I started to be open and more aware of different things around me, um, I started to understand what art is and the effect that it can have not only on me, but other people. Um, Aisha went to a school called LOXA, which is Los Angeles County High School of Arts. And when I was 16, I remember going to her film festivals and seeing these young student filmmakers write, direct, produce, um, edit their own films was incredibly inspiring. And so when I was 16, when I, was 16 I started to fall in love with the arts. And um, I didn't know where to start though. So I kind of found myself at this, um, at this place and Aisha knows where I was an athlete, but I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do art. And so I was telling my dad, I don't want to play sports anymore, but he was like, okay, so what are you going to do? And so I had no prior experience to design photography, writing or directing. And so to articulate and elaborate on what exactly I wanted to do and how I was going to do it to drop soccer, which my life ran on for 10, 12 years, um, was really hard. And so, yeah, by junior year, I found myself in a really, 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 really um, rough pocket for about two months because there was so much overthinking and so much of trying to figure out who I am and what I want to do. And at some point, I just said, let's just dive into it. And so at 16, I kind of let go of all these preconceived notions and all of the things that I was trying to do and just hopped on YouTube. I went on Illustrator, I went on Photoshop. Um, I called my homie and was like, yo, let's start a creative company. And through that, I fell in love with the design. I fell in love with photography and I fell in love with the idea of, of making something. Um, and so I started my own creative company at 16. Um, and I guess, yeah, I, I mean, I started just diving into it and now I kind of identify as a multi-hyphenate creative because I didn't start with one thing. I didn't start with just design. I didn't start with just photography. It was a fusion of all of these different mediums coming into one, which created my company, which is basically my umbrella and instrument to release whatever I want to do, um, and so that's why I threw events, I creative directed them, designed all the posters, um, and I produced it. I, you know, collaborated with all of my friends across LA and, you know, through this huge event, which is um, phenomenal. And um, 
so yeah, I'd say now, like two or three years later, I'm a byproduct of how I started. It's so hard to identify and follow myself to one thing because I started off and continue to do several different things, which I think is beautiful and um, is an example of how the cultural within arts is moving now. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all for those answers. I'm so excited to hear like more about your journey because I know so much of what I've experienced has been at this point, right? And it's great to hear kind of how you got there and um, and like what, you know, what your light bulb moment was, so to speak. Um, I, I have a couple more questions. I want to see, um, how do you define your personal why as an artist? And what are some questions that you posed to yourself to clearly define your reason for creating as you kind of inch towards that part of your journey? Great question. My why? I mean, I think I had to really dive deep into this question not too long ago. Um, just, you know, mainly for myself, but also just to be able to carry that conversation with a lot of other people that wanted to know. Um, but I really think it comes down to simply just where I come from. I mean, I'm from California, Los Angeles. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm a woman of color. I'm a second generation. Um, I kind of just grew up in this art space. And I think, you know, Macy and I also talked about this as well. My why is because I don't want to be ordinary. I think everyone is born with a gift and you need to utilize that. If you know that about yourself, no matter when you define that, no matter when you find that, you just, you know, you got to turn that light on. I think my why is because I don't want to be ordinary. I want to make sure that my voice is heard, that whatever experiences I've had, I want people to relate to as well on any medium. It could be filmmaking, photography, writing, um, as simple as maybe a commercial that you see on TV or a, a poster, or billboard um, that carries some emotion that you gravitate towards. I think that's my why, being able to connect with my audience on ways that I know best that I can do that. And I think my way of doing that is really just, I think really having Maceo, being able to have those open conversations with my sibling, but also my work partner is we balance each other out. We're able to give each other feedback on how we can do things better. How should we go about things differently? And how can we keep pushing the boundary for ourselves and for also the stories we want to tell? Yeah, I think, I think to what Aja was saying, that last point was pushing the boundaries for herself and the stories we want to tell. I think my why is, and I think this is always evolving, and I think it's going to continue to evolve for all of us. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all under 20 years old. Um, well, with the exception of Aja. But the point is, we're all young. And you shouldn't have it figured out. I think that your purpose and your, um, your purpose and journey is going to continue to evolve. And the stories you want to tell is going to consistently change and experience more and more. I think that my why right now is to pay homage to my roots and my family, like Aja says saying and to where I come from to push the conversation forward um, um, and I think yeah I, mean, I think my why is like I just want to I want to tell stories I understand that there is a larger cultural movement within film which is what I want to do in a wide open lane for me and the people that I come from to come into and tell stories that haven't been represented in the past 30 to 40, 50 years within this industry. Um, and I know where we come from. And I know that we are not what society manip has manipulated us to think and be. Um, and I know that my family and my ancestors were strong 
and they've paved the way for my sister and I um, and our collective identity to expand. And I just want to tell stories about that. I want to create images about that. I want to bring communities together in respect to that. Um, and I on like I honestly just want to help. <laughs> I want to help, and um, I want to I want to create spaces for um, for my people and for me to feel safe and comfortable and inspired and, and unified like a family. You know when you're with your family. And you, it's like a family barbecue or a gathering or dinner and, and you just feel safe. Like you can just be free and move as you are without anyone feeling like you're being judged or um, condemned for you being free. And I think that I wanna create environments like that. Um, I think that is my why. Um, and that's channeled through these little fictional stories I have in my head and characters and color palettes and whatnot. And, um, yeah. Those are fantastic answers, y'all. Um, I'm so inspired and I feel very similarly to you all. And um, I'm curious to know kind of, I know we, it, I think you're completely right, Maceo, um, at, at the age that you all are at right now. And just, you know, at many stages in life, it's okay not to have it all figured out, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to keep um, being inquisitive and and redefining what your why is because it's going to evolve over time. But then there are some things that are staples, right? There's some things that you're committed to for life um, in the essence of who you are. And I'd love to hear from you both, um, you know, what types of questions kind of got you curious about defining your why? Like what types of questions were you asking yourselves about perhaps your values? things that are consistently important to you. Like I hear Maceo, you talked a lot about um, telling the storytelling of, um, of, you know, life around you and, and your ancestors and, you know, really keeping those stories alive and telling new stories. Um, Aja, I hear a lot about like, you know, you want to capture folks authentically, right? You want to capture them honestly. Um, you want to uplift the, the community that's around you, but kind of when did you realize that that was like a staple in what you want to have um, come to the forefront in your work, right? Like that that became kind of a non-negotiable in all the projects you take on maybe. Is there is there a why that is a constant that, um, that you feel is like just very true to who you are as an artist and kind of like your defining um, narrative, so to speak? You say you want to go first? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> and I'm still asking myself these questions. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a hard question. I, I think specifically right now and where I'm at right now, I think there's so much beautiful work, but there's so many layers within me that need to be figured out as well. And as an artist, I'm tapping into those. Um, I'm journaling a lot. Um, I was just even talking to my dad about this today and I'm just going to speak completely from the heart and be truthful to you guys. Sometimes being an artist is not working on the grand idea you have 10 years down the line. Sometimes, and actually being an artist is feeling what you feel right now. And a lot of what I'm doing right now is writing about the layers and the insecurities and the fears and the anxieties and <clears throat> the problems that I'm trying to work out. I mean, I think my right now, my biggest form of expression is my journal. I think those and that is where I exist right now. And that is where I'm asking and answering a lot of my questions. Um, and I think that answer is just very truthful to me right now. And like one thing I want to emphasize to all of you is that um, take a moment and it's a little hard to speak about because I'm still I'm still like realizing this right now 
your feelings fluctuate. One day you'll have a grand idea that you'll work on. You'll have a script or you'll have a song and you'll channel however you feel the beats. But then one day you'll realize that you're kind of just in a pocket where you can't do anything. And that is okay. And I think that you guys should embrace that. And I wish that's something that I was told when I was, um, and I'm not even going to say your age because you guys are literally like two years younger than I am. I'm 19. Um, and I'm with you guys. You know what I'm saying? And I think that one thing I wish I knew was that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to embrace what you think people don't want you to feel. And I think that this is why I love Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean saved my life. And if we look at his work, he's just so raw and unfiltered and unapologetic about how he feels. And I think that's why his influence across not only me, but all of my friends and a lot of people I know is so special. Um, So, I mean, I don't know if this is answering your question, Sam, but I think the questions you need to ask yourself is how you're feeling today. Mm -hmm. And I think the most beautiful, important, and the most impactful work, the most timeless work has been channeled through that, is who are you now in the present? And, mm -hmm. and um, not being in love with an, this outcome, this grandeur outcome you might have a Grammy, an Oscar, who are you now? And how can you channel that through whatever beat you want to make, whatever poem you want to write, um, whatever images you want to capture or color palettes that you want to put down onto Illustrator and Photoshop or whatever drawing you want to come up with. I think that the most important work is a reflection of how you are feeling today. Um, so I, that's something I would say is to just be present Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I'm continuing to work on. I'm having a really hard time, but I'm going to get there by the grace of God. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, you know, as Macy has said, that Sam's question is, it's so big and it's so important, but at the same time, I'm still human, you know? It's going to evolve as I get older. It's going to evolve as time goes by. And the more things I'm part of, the more things I'm not, um, and how I process that. Um, me, me specifically, whenever I'm shooting or not shooting, I struggle with a lot of self-doubt and self-confidence. Um, Macy and I were talking about this the other day that I always feel like I'm not good enough. I always feel like there's someone better than me, hungrier than me. And thing is no one is telling me this it's all up here so I think you know my advice to you guys is that little voice in your head you can listen to it as much as you want but it's really just your your conscious it's not real it's not true and it's just something that you're gonna have to overcome I overcome it every single day i try my best to i beat myself up about it um and you know it's just you know something that you're gonna have to deal with we're human you know we're not all perfect we're not all built the same way but we all have the same mindset when it comes to putting ourselves down to I guess you could say, stop us from doing something, stop us from taking that next step into the next chapter of something that could be great, something that could evolve ourselves into something even better than the versions we are now. And, you know, to Sam's question, you know, it's going to evolve. I mean, I'm still young. Um, I just turned 22. Macy is 19. All of you guys are ranging from 15 to 18. And, you know, I think that's definitely a question that we should ask ourselves every day or every year. Um, but, you know, there's a bigger picture down the line. You just got to take the steps to get there. And then again, like, too, like, it's also like, I think Aja and I are both in like very like similar pockets because this is our journey. Like, then again, if this isn't, if it's not that deep to you, like run with that. <clears throat> you know what I mean? If you're it's in the really not, it doesn't pocket. have to be that deep. Yeah, like if, if <laughs> you're in the most blissful pocket of your life, 
and you feel like everything around you is coming together, run with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not here at all to say that it is going to get hard. I'm here to tell you where we are right now and what it is yeah. like to be an artist in 2021 um, from a different perspective. I mean, we are all artists, we all create, and this is just our personal journey and what we are navigating right now. And, you know, if I say that because I also was like, I was like, man, I was just like, I, <sighs> I was also in like the best pocket and I couldn't foresee any of this, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I will say that just, just, just move with what you feel and don't shy away from that. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> Y'all are just dropping these gems. This is, I feel like this is such a great um, conversation to be having at the beginning of this, you know, I think in, in the beginning of this, well, I guess we're not really in the beginning of the summer anymore. We're in mid July, <laughs> but, um, but the beginning of the summer for, for these students, um, because I think, you know, artistry and even us having this conversation is art, right? Yeah. Like even having this exchange um and and art is such an extension of our hearts and our souls and where we're at yeah. on a daily that yeah. checking in with ourselves and being present with ourselves is the one of the the most um honest ways to honor ourselves and to honor yeah. our and to to pour into our art where we're actually at in the moment right because that's where the ideas come from it comes from us it comes from our lived experience it comes from relating to one another um so i i really appreciate your answers and i think that's that is a, a great approach to defining your why is are you present with yourself you and know? like even even look at, all right, so if you had to like funnel down who the four biggest artists right now, Frank Ocean, Tyler the Creator, J, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. There's there's so many others, but let's just start there. Look at their discography and tell me if they're being truthful. I saw at that, I, I had to, I realized that and I was like, ah. Oh. That's, that's the through line. Yeah, I think that that is definitely something um, that I hope is trending, you know, trending upward, that it keeps staying that way, that people keep um, writing from an authentic space. And in that vein, um, I guess my next, next question, I know that, you know, we're at, we're at 142, so like we're running out of time and I wanna give people a chance to ask questions, but I wanna hear a bit about your experience in the creative industries. Um, and then mainly I wanna know why is storytelling important across creative mediums, especially as some of, you know, the, the young folks in five week um, are, begun, are beginning to define their individual artist voice, their brand, so to speak, but not in like a, in authentic branding way, just like understanding, you know, their, their lane or where kind of, you know, how they want to define their own experience mm -hmm. in the music industry their aesthetic, like trying to figure out how to tell their story in a way that's true to, true to them, but also incorporates many different mediums artistically. I mean, like I said earlier, I was a dancer from six to 14. So that was really same as me. So that was all I knew was expression through my body, emotion, and, you know, navigating my way through that as a young woman and when I did my transition over to film I was very lost I was very lost but you know I was so interested into it because you know around I think 2012 2013 that's when like youtubers and bloggers was like a thing so I was like okay I want to do that I think I'd be great for that so in doing that my parents saw me like messing with the camera at 13, filming myself. Instead of using a tripod, I would like get my dad's shoe boxes and like stack 10 of them and put the camera on top. And they would just see me filming myself and trying to like figure out the body of the camera. And in doing that, my parents were like watching me from afar and saying, 
oh, so this is what she does in her free time when she's not at the dance studio. Okay, let's give her an assignment. That's how, my, that's how our parents are. Let's give her a little assignment, a little task to do. And my parents told me to come up with an idea and make a short film. So at 13 years old, I remember my cousin Erica, she's in the chat. She, um, I was sitting with her at 13 years old in my pajamas at my mom's office and was like, what am I going to write? this short film on I've I don't know what do I write about dance do I write about how annoying my siblings are do I do I write about loving being home and as I started narrowing down my ideas I decided to write a film called life of a shoe and it was basically just depicting on how we go through so many things in life to where we're not even noticing the little things and, you know, I just basically revolved it around shoes, how we pick up a brand new pair, we go through life with it as long as it lasts, and then we give it up and start over. And I think it's, you know, it's something that can we can relate to anything in life, whether it's a diet, having a friend and losing that friendship, or a job, an idea, a song that you make that you think it's going to be something grand and then it turns into something different. And when I made Life of a Shoe at 13, my parents were like, okay, let's sit down and edit this together. So we did that. And my parents submitted it to an art school for film. Not really, I didn't really know about it, but basically Locks at my high school is kind of like Victorious. I'm pretty sure that you young people know about Victorious. Victorious was a Nickelodeon show about an art school in Hollywood. And it was like Victorious and Fame put together. And so when I joined LOXA for filmmaking, it was just brand new territory that I was really excited to dive deep into. So when being there from 14 to 18, I was just, I mean, Maceo can, I don't know, Maceo could probably be like a witness of it, but every single weekend, I was pretty much on a film project set for school. And what was great about it is that we were able to make beautiful films and tell beautiful stories with no money at all. It was like, okay, let's, we have a camera. Okay, we have a mic. We know someone who can act. Great. Let's try and make something beautiful out of what we have and what we can do. I mean, I think also just, you know, I think a lot of people to this day and even down the line, they're going to think, oh, I need this nice camera to do this. I need this type of person to do this. Use whatever you have. You have a phone. There you go. iPhone got three cameras built into it. You can use that. And I think even just, you know, 15, I had my first film internship and that was great. I was organizing photos not much I could do. I did three hours a day and that was a great experience. And as I got older, I was able to try and navigate my way to getting on set. And I was a photo PA. So I was doing like BTS on Apple shoots, beach shoots. And I think not only was I able to navigate my way into that industry, but it was also just your personality and how you really carry yourself. I'm naturally, I would say I'm a pretty outgoing person. And whenever I do meet someone, I try my best to like really get a good conversation out of it. You could do the small talk, you know, you could do the small talk, like, hi, how are you? Oh, you do that. Cool. And walk away. But like, you really, I think it's great whenever you're in a space to have a good conversation with someone is to like, really try your best and to dive deep into that. You don't have to like, go too deep but you can you know do a little bit to where it's like okay I know who this person is I know what they do and I know what they're about and it's also like a whole it's a vibe thing as well you know someone could be like the coolest person ever dope but if their vibe is I don't know depends on how you go about it but so I I mean I figure that out at 16 and I'm still figuring that out to this day at 22. But after I graduated high school, I decided to move to New York 
because I grew up in Los Angeles. I'm familiar with my network on the West Coast. It's time to move to the East and figure that out on my own. I didn't know a lot of people in the East Coast. I have a couple of family members, but I knew that that was a journey that I had to figure out on my own. And I still am. I've been home in Los Angeles for a year because of the pandemic, but I'm going back soon to press play and start that journey all over again. And I attend Parsons School of Design for Photography. And I think, you know, the pandemic coming back home really made me realize and value so many things in life that I wasn't paying attention to in my younger years. You know, I think the main value that I have in my life is surround yourself with people that will make you a better version of yourself. I think, you know, a lot of, I had to learn this at, I think, 18, but when I graduated high school is that not everyone in your life that is currently present, whether it's a friendship or, um, you know, a fashion trend or music that you listen to, everything is still evolving. The version of this, yourself that you are now is going to be so different than the person you are in two weeks, a month, a year, five years, 20 years. And I mean, going back to, I was a dancer growing up and now I'm a content creator, cinematographer, for, you know, multi-hyphenated artist. And I think I just had to be really open to evolving and, you know, being highly, highly conscious of the people I surround myself in, the things I dedicate my energy to, and also just making sure that I'm taking care of myself. And that's all I have. <laughs> I want to let Maceo respond as well, but I also want to open it up for questions. If you all have direct questions and want to come off mute, please do so. We have about, you know, eight minutes before we have to wrap up, but feel free to drop in the chat or just, you know, come off um, or speak on the microphone. So opening that up. Hello. Hello. Hi, Rick. Hi. So I, I have a question. Uh, my question would be for both of you, uh, Maceo and maybe if, I don't know if you've ever had to deal with the feeling of feeling like you are running out of time in your life, like maybe you're too late. For your goals or whatnot how do you deal with that because you know i feel like an old man in here i i see you talking to everyone in here like you guys are all under 20s or whatever i'm 27 how do i deal with that like i'm not sure yeah do you want to go i can go um what's up rick thank you for that question i mean like i said and like you said i'm still very young and you know i also tell myself that question like you're running out of time someone's gonna be hungrier than you someone's gonna want it more than you but you know you just gotta try your best to do as much as you can no matter what you know, I think that's something that we all struggle with is that we're like, oh, there's someone going to be better than me. There's someone's going to make a song that's going to be awesome. And like, I wasn't part of that or I didn't make that or even something as simple as like, oh, someone talked to that person before me. Damn, I missed my moment. We have so much time in life. We really do. I mean, I tell myself that every day, like, oh, you're running out of time. You're running out of time. Come on, you got to pick it up. You got to pick it up. But as long as you take a moment, sit with what you have and what's right in front of you and utilize that 
and ready to take the next step, then you have all the time in the world. As long as you keep doing what you can to push the boundary for yourself, then I think you'll be able to be a little more confident and more at peace with that. Thank you, Aisha. Thanks for the question, Rick. Does anyone else have any other questions for Aisha and Maceo while they're still with us? Um, if I can ask a question, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, like, who's your biggest inspirations or what, or just inspirations in general? Ooh. Yeah, Maceo's is definitely different than mine. So he should go first. <laughs> oh, that's like a hard question. It's like asking like, uh, I have a lot. I have a lot. Um, I admire different things about different people. I admire Kanye West's ability to speak his truth. I admire Ty Creator's freedom in the world he has created for his own fictional characters to exist in. I love Wes Anderson's. I love also. I also love how Wes Anderson does that, um, similar to the title of the creator. Um, I don't know if you guys. Nadia Lee Cohen's phenomenal photographer. I'm interested in worlds. I like when people build worlds for them, their feelings, their color palettes, their shapes, their emotions, um, and their characters to exist in. Um, so Wes Anderson, Tyler, Nadia Lee Cohen. Um, T.D. Jakes is a huge influence. I love that man. Um, and Wong Kar Wai, he's a, he's a director. He's phenomenal. He is phenomenal. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I have a, I have a lot. I don't want to go down the, the, the list, but um, I'd say those 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 people have played pivotal pivotal roles in my life. Aja, do you have any thoughts? Any? I know it's a big question. Mine's mine's honestly very simple, um, and I I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, mine's really just the people I surround myself with whether it's my parents, um, my friends, my boyfriend, like my classmates, honestly, everyone. Because, you know, we all, we all vibe off each other. We all push each other. And, you know, if I see all my loved ones doing something that I think is awesome and great, it's gonna push me to also do that for myself. Absolutely. Um, we have one more question in the chat. Do you think, do you ever think of how differently your life would have been if you stayed on your old path? Or do you think your path, the path you're on now would always have inevitably played out in the end? I definitely would have still been a dancer. That's for sure. Um, I mean, no, I definitely don't think that I would still be in the same place that I am if I was continuing to do what I was doing six years ago. Um, but I'm glad I was able to make that change. I mean, I love to dance so much, but you know, filmmaking is, it's so much different than what I thought it was going to be at 14. And I feel like I'm still continuing to immerse myself in that, but you know, it's great. It's awesome. Maceo? I don't know. <laughs> I thought would have been playing soccer or something. No, I knew I didn't want to play soccer. I don't, I don't know. Because that, that, like, I could, I could talk about, like, not even on a passion tip, just on an emotional tip. Like, there's so many, been, there's been so many shifts in spirit that have been recently and if I stayed on that path I don't know what would have happened but I don't know I mean I think God has a plan I think everything happens for a reason um 
and everything that happened thus far has been all part of the journey. And I think I don't, on to your question, I don't find myself <clears throat> uh, down that rabbit hole often. I kind of just embrace what happens and, and move forward from there. I think that's a great school of thought to take on, Maceo. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good one. I know we have one more question, but I, I do want to wrap up since I know many students have classes after this. Um, and I just want to thank everyone for being really open in the chat and sharing what they feel their why is. Um, we're going to keep on having these types of conversations. And I just want to thank Maceo and Aja so much for creating a safe space for um, this conversation and sharing so much of yourselves and your journey. This was, I think, I, I'll speak for myself just as much for the students as it was for like all of us in this space. So um, really, really appreciate everything you shared. And I know that um, a lot of students have messaged me saying they, they really appreciated this, uh, this time and this discussion. So thank you both. Um, I don't know where folks can kind of follow you or like keep up with your journey, if that's something you wanna share, but um, would love to, to figure out ways to connect you and the students should you feel comfortable. Um, and also we will be sharing this recording uh, with the students afterwards. So you all will have a chance to revisit this since I know there are a lot of um, nuggets of wisdom in here that, that will be good to revisit. So thank you. I don't know if you all have any last words, but I'll kind of, Pass it on. I'll see you all very soon. I'm yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be back in the East Coast soon. Awesome. Yes, we will. Friends at Berkeley, I love everyone at Berkeley. I'll I'll see you all <laughs> soon. Yes, um, Maceo and Aja are inducted into the Berkeley City Music family for sure. For sure. Okay. All right. So we are um, done for the day. Thanks all, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.